Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the FP304, the BERT. It's a tier 6 British SPG. It's located on the Eastbourne of Sand River and it's under the command of Wazwolf. Now he's got the uh, Top Gun, the uh, 4.5 inch howitzer, which is capable of doing 450 alpha and it'll penetrate through 28 millimeters of armor with a 2.2 meters burst radius and the standard reload is 12.94 but Wasswolf's got that down to 10.28 now it's a fast mover because top speed 72.4 kilometers an hour uh, but it needs to have that speed to get away from the enemy just in case they get spotted because you have to get fairly close the 4.5 inch howitzer won't uh, go very far but it does have a big hit and he splashes the T-52 you can see a number of other enemy tanks turning up rounds out that was a good leading shot there he had exactly the right amount of time to enable the shell to intercept the target finds another one in blind but that one doesn't hit now, it's actually supposed to be about 23 tons in weight, this little fighting vehicle. And it is an FB fighting vehicle. It was one of the new design of vehicles. They started working on this in 1943, and they designed this one by 1947. They were supposed to have a prototype by 1950, but by the time they got around to actually building the prototype, it was already obsolete, and therefore they didn't go ahead and build it. That was a direct hit. It is the fastest SPG in the game and also one of the most accurate RTs in the game as well. You can see there, 159 hit points on the KV-2. I must admit, I was playing this one today myself, or what? not uh, Wazwolf's one, but uh, I was having a go on the FP-304 myself. It can be great fun. In fact, you can terrorize the enemy because there's no way they can move away from a fixed position. You know, if they try to camp, they're going to get hit, and they're going to get hit bad. And eventually, it does make them move away, because there's no way they can stay and fight you, not with these shells coming in there vertically. And he's got a kill. 38 hit points, uh, but the last one was a kill shot. Okay, now he's firing out into the desert, because there is a T-52 up there. And there's also a type over there as well. Tier 6 game with only tier 6 tanks in it. T-52 has been spotted. It's just the other side of that dune. Bonks around in for 153. We are fairly close to him. But he can't see us. But the next round could be deadly to him. But it is. That's a kill. But not for uh, Waswolf. It actually went to the SU-100. And he's right up on that ridge next to our cap area. Okay, going back to the Type 58. Of course, that's the Chinese version of the T-3485. Uh, but it looks like he's not there. We need our VK-2801 to go out and have a quick look. Uh, we're killing so many of the enemy. The, they're all up the other end of the map now. The only one that's actually near us is the Type 58, but we can't see him. And if we continue to fire in this general area, we're going to miss out on more kills. So he's going to move away because that Type 58 probably can't see him. And if he doesn't get closer to the enemy, he's going to miss out on a whole load of hit points. Squeezes through the bottleneck. There are enemy tanks up here he can hit, but probably about here. Yes, he stopped the vehicle to take a shot. We've got a Basotto up on top of the hill. Fires his first snap in, gets the direct hit. And yes, that Basotto is taking damage. Although he's not getting any damage assist out of this one. He just got hit by the, one of our arties. Oh, he got the kill. He took out the Basotto. But another enemy turned up. It's the Type 58. And he's almost within view range. Well, he is in view range because he's just around the corner. But he's got to deal with the baguette first. 
Now, at this point, I would probably be switching to uh, um, shotgun mode. Getting ready. Rounds out. That's a kill. That's his third kill of the game. There's only three enemies left now. It's amazing the enemy didn't spot him on that last shot. We should have seen him at least once. T-78 to the south. Of course, he's not going to spot us, but he's way up in the dunes. He thinks he's safe up there. He's not. And that shows him 167 hit points from that one. Basically a light tank with a big gun. It's actually a tank destroyer, but a premium tank destroyer at that. Unfortunately, he now realizes that all he has to do is move about a bit and he can keep firing. Meanwhile, this AMX-12 ton... Oh, he's gone. He just got killed by the baguette. So we've got to focus on this one because he's the last enemy. Last chance for four kills. Nope, missed on that one. It has got a big reticule bloom because the, it's a very narrow arc. Oh, he got him! And he wins the game and that's it. Game over. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was an ace tanker game for Waswolf of Quinn in the FB304. He managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills, and with that last kill, yes, he got the fourth one. He also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 15, and he got a win eight of 4,152, which is super unicum standard. Let's have a look at team score and see where his uh, hit points were. Well, didn't get the highest damage. That T-78 he killed right at the end. That guy got 2,058 hit points of damage. So he was a good player. In fact, he's no free name is the name of the player. Um, the second highest score was, in fact, the Hellcat. 1,945 hit points. And that was on Waswolf's team. And Waswolf was the third highest scorer with 1,661 when it came to kills, though, Waswolf got the highest number with four kills. Three kills went to the Basotto that he killed. And two kills went to the Jagdpanzer Fear on the enemy team, the T-150, the AMX-12 ton, and the SU-100 on his own team. And when it came to base XP, it's the T-150 that did the best with 1,109, with the Hellcat getting 836. And then we've got Waswolf getting 809 in third place. He fired 21 rounds in the game, but he got 10 direct hits, but none of them penetrated, but he did get 19 splashes. Damage of 1,661, of which 1,374 were at more than 300 meters, so you can see there were some close-range shots in that game. In fact, the T-52 and, of course, that uh, Type 58 were both very, very close when he was shooting at them. Nine enemy vehicles damaged, four killed. 502 hit points of damage assist. Now, on a premium count, he actually earned a profit of 28,053 credits from the game, and he also got 8,497 experience points, and he got a mission completion in there as well, so that's why it boosted up. And that's a nice, simple game in the FB304. It takes a little while to get used to them. They have to get very close to the enemy. It can get dangerous. It can get hairy. Because if the enemy does spot you, they'll more than likely try and nail you. But you remember, you have got the speed to get away from them. In fact, most enemies, if they do try to chase you, they might have a lot of difficulty keeping up. Because about the only tanks that can take on an FB304 and keep up with them is a light tank. And one of the lighter light tanks at that. And remember, you've still got that big 4.5 inch howitzer. And if the enemy does chase you, you can sort of pirouette on the spot with a sliding brake turn and turn the tables on them by putting a big 4.5 inch right up their hooter. And that will certainly make them think twice about chasing RT. Hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.